How's it going everybody? It's Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast, here with my next installment of my Lancaster build. This is the Border Models Lancaster, as you know. So, when we left off, I was just starting to get into the masking. I've taken it a little bit further now, as you can see, just masking off the wings. And, um, and I've now, before I start spraying any of the camouflage in black, I decided to get some of the cockpit green sprayed on the insides of all of the cockpit uh, framework. So I've sprayed that already. And uh, and I also did this, uh, the Bomb Aimer's blister because I've been studying photos and it looks like it was just painted cockpit green, even on the outside, um, at least on the earlier Lancasters. And then later on, it seems they started painting it black. But uh, yeah, it's, I've seen conclusive pictures that show it in a much lighter color that seems to match the outer perimeter which we know was cockpit green so um yeah hopefully that's going to look really nice and correct um so i'm about ready now to start spraying the camouflage so as you can see here i've used some frisket mask you can buy this in sheets it comes on a roll uh, or in sheets, however you want to buy it. But uh, yeah, it's like peel and stick. You can cut it with a knife precisely and use it all the time for airbrushing um, whatever you're doing and uh, works really well. But it, the great thing about it is you can see through it. So for lining up these uh, camouflage lines, I can just follow that over. I can see exactly where it needs to go. And uh, it'll be easy to spray that way to match up the camouflage. Now, one more thing I'm gonna do before I get into this camouflage painting, I keep mentioning it. I'm gonna use, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use decal sheet or actually some tape, but I wanna cover over these seam lines here. There's one there, there's one there, there's another one back here. And these are factory seam lines that the real Lancasters all had that were covered in tape. And what you see in a lot of the photos is that tape is starting to, you know, it's been torn in certain areas and it's actually peeling away. Um, which is a neat little detail that a lot of people don't even notice unless you know what you're looking for. But uh, yeah, these tape lines are quite prominent. And the way that this model has been constructed or designed, you know, they've got natural joints falling on those tape lines. So, um, so I want to cover those joints with some sort of a tape. I'm, I'm leaning towards going with a masking tape, but I'll cut to the, to the right thickness and then, uh, and just use some ACC lightly spread on the backside and just start one end and pull it around. I think that's what I'm going to do there just to give those distinctive tape lines. And then, yeah, like I say, we'll get into the camel, well, the uh, pre-shading of all the panel lines and then the camouflage. Probably start with the dark earth and then proceed with the green. So, lots to do in this video. We'll get into it. Well, here we are. We're coming along with the pre-shading. So, you can see all the masking I've added. Just uh, carefully wrapping the landing gear with paper towel there. And uh, yeah, it's coming right along. I'll pick it up and show you the other side here. Okay, and here's the top side showing its pre-shading. So, uh, next step I'll be getting in and spraying the uh, the dark earth, the brown. So, uh, you can see the lines. I'll probably pencil them on there like I did on the wings. And just so I got a line to follow and uh, spray the brown and then come in with the green. Okay, so moving right along here, you can see I've been spraying the camouflage. I'm um, building it up, you know, I, I spray it and, uh, and then let it dry and you can see all the uh, pre-shading in there. That's too much, I, I gotta tone that down. So I'm gonna re-spray both colors and, and get rid of some of that pre-shading so it's more subtle and uh, not so in your face. So it's kind of tricky to tell when you're spraying because when it's wet, it looks like it's covered really well and then it dries and you can see right through it. So um, it's one of the benefits of diluting the paint so much. Um, it sprays really nicely. You can get really nice edges and you can build up your color. Uh, so we'll give that another shot and uh, have a look at, at it again. So there are the cup 
color on the camouflage is much better and I'm uh, just well it's crazy under extreme light with this camera you still see it although you don't really see it unless you're looking through the camera but um, anyway I'm happy with it thus far we'll be weathering it down anyway so I'm now masking to spray the black so I'm using the Tamiya uh, masking tape to get the line established and then just using some green painters tape to do the majority Okay, look at that. We've got the masking tape peeled away and revealing the beautiful camouflage and black color scheme. Um, so with the uh, black, I the same as the wings, I sprayed NATO black over top of the pre-shading. And the NATO black is quite a gray black. So, uh, you know, got it sprayed all over evenly with the NATO black, which, you know, then the pre-shading looks quite extreme so then I came back in with uh, some more of the Mr. Surfacer 1500 over there and uh, it, which is the black I use for pre-shading and just kind of muted it down and blended it out and and went over the same uh, panel lines as I had done with the pre-shading to, to make that still stand out somewhat um, and it just gives a really nice you know mix black with texture and you know, breaks it up a little and uh, makes it look really good. So this is uh, masking tape removed and I've just, when I pulled the masking tape off, I lost a couple of my window masks and, and a little bit of the uh, liquid mask here. So I've remasked those areas and then I gave the whole thing a nice clear coat. So it's a little shinier than it will be when it's all finished, um, but that's going to help with all of my oils and washes and that that I'm going to proceed with in the weathering. I've just uh, dry fit the Bombay doors. They're a nice tight fit and they look great. So yeah, it's all coming together beautifully. So I'm gonna be, uh, the next steps, um, I'm gonna be doing the roundels and lettering on the side. And I've actually recently just been contacted by a local fellow who's been watching my YouTube videos and is able to, he actually cuts these, uh, letters and numbers for these aircraft and has done a few for himself and said he can probably help me to uh, make the KMZ ED331 uh, masks for me, um, which is amazing. So um, yeah, we're just uh, having some emails right now. So hopefully I'll be getting these masks for doing the lettering in the next few weeks and uh, we'll be able to do all the lettering on the side there and put it all together. Uh, meanwhile, I'm probably going to get into uh, working on the turrets and building them up. Um, the tail sections are all ready to go. I can put those on any time, although I think I'm going to leave them off until all that lettering's on. It'll just be easier to have them out of the way. So, yeah, we're looking really good. So I'll, I'll show you the next steps. Wow. So just want to show I just had a visit from my local new friend, Doug, who found me through my YouTube channel uh, following my videos on this Lancaster build and said, hey, if you need uh, some masks for the KMZ ED331 lettering that is unique to this aircraft, he has a program and is able to cut them quite easily, just give him the dimensions. So sure enough, I sent him the dimensions and some photos of the artwork uh, from other lengths of the squadron so we could get the font sorted out. And it turns out he lives right around the corner in the same town that I live in here on Vancouver Island. Like, amazing. <laughs> just happened to find me through, through YouTube, and uh, here we are. So he just dropped by with these that he just uh, printed off and did the cutting. And these are my masks for doing the lettering. One man army style, you know, um, this is a different style of paper, but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna do great. He cut a bunch of extras as uh, transfer tape, so I can, you know, take one of these and stick it over top of that and then put it on the model, line it up, make sure it's all straight and then peel this off and it'll keep these letters from getting distorted when you try to peel them off. Um, so yeah. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Doug. Very happy to have met you, and I'm, I'm still amazed that you live so close. That's great. So, just getting into some of this one-man army stuff again. So, I'm going to be adding the fuselage 
stripes on the belly. There's one at the front and one at the rear. And they say like trestle here and steady here on the front. So they give you the option here. You can either use 24 uh, on its own, which you can see on here, if I can focus. Uh, yeah, this is 24, this curved one, so you can see how they come. So I've got to peel that off, um, leaving the center open. But it comes with its own, when you look at this under the light, it comes with its own, it says trestle here and steady here. But those are almost too small to see through, like they're so tiny. So they give you the option of doing it with slightly larger masks here if you want those letters to be a little more bold. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with the bolder ones. We'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what it looks like on the model before I spray it and decide if I wanna just trim off the end of this and put this one on instead, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll peel those off and stick them in place. Okay, so here we are. I've got the stripe on and the trestle here, and then there's there's a little first aid kit there with a handle. So I'll be painting the inside of that box red, and then there's a clear part that goes on there with a, a handle that you make. So, um, and it says first aid above it and pull below it. Um, so I've got those stencils on there. And yeah, like I say, put this on the stripe one and it's one where it has the two stripes like I showed you but to transfer it to the model you've got to make sure you use uh, transfer tape over over uh, the whole thing to keep it in line and then set it on the model using rivet lines as a, as a guide and then peel the center out so that it keeps those two parallel because they're really narrow so it's easy to have one of one or the other doing this or making the line go thick or thin. So it's very important to use that transfer tape. But yeah, you can see this. Sorry for the shaky movements. Um, so now I'm gonna be carrying on with the letters and, and the aircraft number going up the side. Um, so I've got those transfers that my friend Doug made me. We're gonna give it a shot. Okay, so coming along with uh, masking, um, you can see I'm using the stencils that uh, my friend Doug here printed off for me. So, um, and then there's the roundel in the center, the one-man army roundel. But yeah, there's the KM, Z. I've, of course, I've still got to continue with uh, more masking around the letters. I've just kind of placed them in. I'm, I'm getting started here with the ED331. So I'll be masking the rest of the fuselage, and then we can start spraying. So... I think the the order of operation I'm going to do this, I'll do all the red first because the stripe and trestle here and ED331 and all the letters are red. And of course the center of the roundel is red. Um, so I think I'm going to spray the red first and then I'll mask off those areas and then, uh, you know, just put the red dot back where that goes and then I'll do the rest of the roundel colors afterwards so yeah coming along here i've still got to do the other side as well so it's it's slow going and you can see that these masks from uh doug are beautifully done although they are on a clear uh well it's actually a darkened you can see here it's like a darkened uh see-through paper which makes it almost impossible to see on the on the black but i mean i could i could easily just quickly spray that with white or whatever I want to do but it's um you know it's it's at the same time it shows shows where you got to squish it down you can see the air bubbles under it so I'll have to uh when it's time to spray I'll go over each one carefully to get the air bubbles out around the rivet detail but um yeah I'm really excited to use these I think they're going to work like a charm really nicely done so thanks Doug and thank you one man army so we'll show you the progress as we get going and here we are. I've just removed all of the masking tape after spraying just the red. And look at that. Beautiful. They, those masks worked out fantastic. Thank you so much, Doug. Uh, you've really helped me out. And uh, yeah, that looks fantastic. So I'll be coming back and finishing off the roundel. So now that I've sprayed the red there, I'm going to put the red mask back into the center there. And then 
remove the next color and I got a mask around the edges so they don't have lines around <laughs> the edges of each one because you can see the little cut lines so you don't want to have like a red ring around the outside of that white so I started with the red now I'm gonna cover it over and I'm gonna work myself out way my way out basically um, I'm probably gonna do the white next as well as the yellow because I can spray I can pre spray the white under the yellow and then do the yellow so um, yeah gotta kind of do this in an order I do have some touch up I'm sure you can see there's little edges in here and there and I got a little bit of overspray right there so I'll come in with the airbrush later on and do some of these touch-ups but for the most part I'm very happy with how this is turning out you know it's uh, this is my first time using masks for doing all the lettering and it's really changing the game I've always done decals in my life and you know I've had varying results because it's really hard to get rid of carrier film and evidence of that and shininess and make it all blend in and this changes everything so that red I should say is it's a custom mix to to darken it so I, I was I googled what people are doing for the RAF colors and the red is just the uh, Tamiya uh, flat red um, with 20% of uh, NATO brown added to it. So I just did that in the color cup using a, a dropper and uh, just counting the drops. So I got a good percentage. So it looks a lot redder through the camera here than it actually is in real life. It's It's got quite a, a, uh, a brownish or brick color to it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm really happy with the color there. Really came out nice. Um, so yeah, we'll do the finish up making the roundels and do all my touch up painting and then start weathering. So we'll show you how that goes. Okay, so you can see I've just sprayed the white now and so I'll be covering over that white ring and then filling in the gap between the red center and the white ring and the blue ring for that matter, which is still has masking. So I'll be, yeah, covering over the white ring, putting a square over that whole thing so it's masked off, and then I'll spray the yellow, which is this outer ring, um, over top of that white that I've just sprayed. So yeah, because obviously the roundel is uh, yellow on the outside, then blue, then white, then red. So that's what we're doing. We've already done the red, we've now done the white, with white around underneath of the yellow so the yellow will show better then I'll do blue last okay so now I've I sprayed the yellow around the outside and I've already masked it I put the yellow ring back over top and I've gone around the edges so that there's no ring around the outside of the yellow when I spray the next color and same thing with the red I've put the red you can see the the uh, white mask is put back in place over top of the white and the red mask is still there and I've gone over the edges between the join between those two so that there's none showing I gotta put a little bit more tape to cover that little white edge so that when I spray the blue there's no blue rings around any of these other rings so you gotta go over the edges of the other rings so we'll get that all done and we'll spray the blue and here we are, masking all removed. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful results. Very happy with the colors. Um, the KMZ is exactly the right size, um, which I will note is quite a bit smaller than a lot of the Lancaster lettering that you saw in other squadrons. I've, I've studied this and, and yeah, the 44 squadron, the KMZ, the letters were a lot smaller. They, they stayed below the lower line of windows in every case and the z the whatever the call number was was much smaller than the km um, so i've we've captured that thanks again doug these those masks you made were wonderful they look great the ed331 as well just came out lovely so very happy with the results uh i will be using one man army masks from now on for anything i can that they that they produce masks for so very happy with that here i'll show you the other side of the aircraft here yeah here we are with the other side so 
It's crazy uh, how much this fills my desk. It's very hard to work on because it's so big. Um, you can only set it on a, a couple different angles. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. So I can continue on. I can assemble the tail sections and of course build up the turrets and do all them. And, uh, and there's going to be lots more weathering happen. I haven't really done any weathering on the fuselage yet, except for the pre-shading, which looks really great there. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing chipping and stuff like that. Um, I've noticed uh, in a lot of pictures, the noses of these got quite chipped. Um, so I'll be coming and trying to do a bunch of that. Um, but yeah, this is, I'm very happy with how that lettering came out. Like I say, the, the sizing is so unique for this 44 Squadron stuff, so I'm glad we got that right. And uh, yeah, those one-man army masks really did a great job on those roundels. And of course, all these little, the smaller print here, first aid, pole, trestle, it's amazing. That was all done with a mask. So tiny. So, and uh, I mean, it's hard to tell the sizing here but here's here's a typical paintbrush and uh just super tiny um so very impressed with those one man army masks um of course this is your the they would store the dinghy in there that's what that yellow is is the so you can see that the dinghy is in place so i'll be putting there's a little uh perspex window that goes over top of that uh yellow area so i gotta do that still of course, all the window masks are still in place, so there's rows of side windows all along here that we'll be revealing eventually. But uh, yeah, looking really good. So I'm going to carry on with the weathering next and, and finishing up the turrets. And, uh, and uh, you know, the last video, I think, we'll be doing the turrets and final weathering to, to finish the aircraft. So I'm going to call this... A finished video just fin doing all the lettering and painting so until the next video I'm Jeff Chrysler a detail enthusiast we'll see you again